Hi everybody, it is April and I am in my craft room and today we are going to make a three yard quilt from the book Make It Modern Three Yard Quilts. The name of the quilt is Fandango and when it's done you're going to want to put it in a frame. Here you can see I have cut fabric one and fabric two, and now I'm getting ready to cut fabric three. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to straighten the edge. I'm going to cut fabric three. I cannot share the measurements because this is a pattern from Fabric Cafe. It is from the Make It Modern quilt book and it is called Fandango. If you want this pattern, you can go to the Fabric Cafe website. I'll leave a link in the description below and purchase the book. I do not know if they sell this as a single pattern, but sometimes that is an option. The great thing about Fabric Cafe patterns is they have you put together blocks in the easiest way possible. So a lot of times there are strip sets that you sew together first and then subcut them to get what you want. So I need to subcut Fabric 1 into smaller blocks. So I'm going to stack them on top of one another after I run an iron over them. So if you don't run the iron over them, you have this crease. We want our fabric to lie flat. Now you can get around that by stacking your fabric. And then when you come to this crease, flip your fabric over the other way and start from the other end. Make sure that your stack is even. I did a fake press. I pressed it where the crease was. Really, the only crease that was in the fabric was the one in the middle of the strip. Now, you do not have to stack them. You can cut them one at a time. This is your preference. It is whatever you are comfortable with. First thing I'm going to do is get rid of the selvage. And Maxine is helping I do want to talk about these little flowers for a minute, and I just learned this from Tim Holtz. So when you see the different colors on the selvage, that is how many times this piece of fabric had to be run through to add the color to the design. This fabric took quite a bit of time to dye. And I thought that was pretty interesting when I found out what those flowers or what those images on the selvage actually meant. Now I need to sub cut my fabric two. And then I'm going to do the two ruler method in order to measure my blocks. So I have subcut fabric one and these are the blocks that are going to form the corners of these blocks here where it's almost like a half snowball. Any using one fabric number one which is this and two fabric number three sew together on the long edges. Repeat making two assemblies. Fabric three is going to go on either side of fabric one and we're going to do that with both strip sets. Now notice I do not remove my selvages. I will just put this selvage, match it up with the other selvage, and go ahead and sew and then I can cut the selvage off when I subcut these. Here are our strips. So this is fabric one and it's bordered by fabric three on both sides. 
So now I need to subcut these. Notice I have pressed these. I did not iron them, I pressed them. Now I have placed them one on top of the other, but not directly on top of one another. So under here, I kind of put them on an offset so that I don't have a bunch of bulk to go through when I cut these. First thing I'm going to do is remove the selvage. And this is why I didn't do that earlier because I knew that I could just wait and sew these and remove it when I subcut these strips. So now I'm going to cut them and I need to make 12 units. Now I'm going to flip them over because they get a little skewed and I will cut them from the other side. So the selvage is still on this side, so I need to cut this off. When I'm cutting this, I'm going to take a line on my ruler and line it up along this seam line to make sure that I am cutting straight. Now, this is the beginning of block A. So I am going to take these leftover strips and I'm going to attach them to either side of block A to complete block A. So I'll attach one to one side, attach the other to the other side, and this will be block A. So block A is done. So I'm going to put this up on my design wall and I should have two of these blocks in each row. <laughs> So part of my quilt is already up on the design wall. Now let's make the next blocks. The next blocks are what I'm gonna call partial snowballs. Linda Holt, I would like to thank you for watching and sharing your projects with me. So everybody, let's get started on our partial snowball blocks. Our partial snowball blocks will take fabric two which is cut into larger squares, two of the smaller squares that we cut out for fabric one. And what we're going to do is mark the center of the square. You can fold it and then kind of finger press it so you have that fold and then place it in the corner of your block and you need to sew along that fold line or you can take a pin that will disappear it doesn't even really have to be a pin that will disappear because it will kind of meld into your block so i'm going to take this purple pin i mark down the middle and then i do the same thing on the opposite side and I sew along this pin line. So either the pin line or the fold will do. When I sew something like this, instead of using my quarter inch seam placement of my needle, I like to put the needle in the center of my foot. And in the center of my foot, I have a red line. So that enables me to line up that red line along either my fold or my ink line. And this is where I would do some chain piecing. Just love these colors together. All right, so here I'm just going to place the, and I'm using a fold on this one. Place my fold here, keep, keep on trucking, and my fold goes along the red line in the center of my foot. And I will just continue to do this. So 
so here you can see all of my partial snowball, partial snowballed together. Here we have our partial snowball block. So we have a seam right in the center. What we are going to do is we are going to cut a quarter inch away from the seam towards the outside of the block. I like to use a ruler that has the quarter inch marking on it so I can line up my seam along that quarter inch line of my ruler and then cut. So I get four triangles out of this and then once I open up and press I will have a block that is a partial snowball. Now we have our partial snowball blocks. Let me put those on the design wall and then we'll figure out what we're going to do next. <laughs> I didn't realize it but on my partial snowballs when your row starts with the block and a block then your snowball part goes to the left on both of the fabric two with the fabric one. Then when your partial snowball block starts the row the snowball part goes to the right and that gives the illusion of kind of a star around the outside of the block. Now I did not cut any of the borders for this because I like to make my borders bigger sometimes and if I have more than three fabrics that coordinate together sometimes I like to do double borders and I'm not necessarily going to use the same fabric that's in the three yard quilt. So let me throw this together and then I'll decide how I'm going to do the borders on the outside. So here it is. Let's see. Did I mess it up? <laughs> yes, I did. I was so careful. However, I'm not gonna fix it because, yeah, it doesn't look that bad to me. So, now about the border. The pattern calls for fabric one to go as the first border and then fabric three to go as the outside border. I really love fabric one so I think what I'm going to do is put fabric one all the way around. And what I want you to do is tell me which row I did incorrectly. As you can see, I'm standing in front of a wall that is missing the middle of the quilt. I'm going to thank Sherry for this and when I say thank you, it might have two different meanings. So, because my two rows were done incorrectly, I have ripped apart, not really ripped, but I have used my handy dandy seam ripper to take all the pieces of those two rows. We'll talk about this in a minute. Apart and put them together correctly. When you are ripping, seam ripping that is, be careful not to rip your seam in the wrong spot. So I have to recreate this block and then sew those two rows with the 
snowball thing pointing the right way. Thank you, Sherry. And speaking of thanking Sherry, I would like to give a real thank you for my cups of coffee from Betty Lynn, Jen Holly, and JK. I'm going to go put these rows back together the right way. And then I will be adding these borders. But I'll come back and we'll talk about that for just a minute in just a minute. There you go, Sherry. I hope you're happy. But on another note, Sharon Johnson, thank you for watching my channel. And thank you everyone who takes the time out of your busy day to watch my channel. So I'm getting rid of the uh, handy dandy seam ripper. As you can see, I have fixed my quilt. Now, this is what I've decided to do. I'm going to take fabric three and I cut a three inch strip. I'm going to put it all the way around the quilt and then I'm going to take fabric one. For this, I cut a four inch strip and I'm going to put that all the way around the three inch border of fabric three. I wanted to use this plaid, but all I have left of it is this. And I don't think that that's going to give me enough to make my binding. So I purchased this, which is part of the Zinnia collection. And that is what I'm going to use for my binding. So let me put my borders on my quilt and I'll be back. I thought I would just pass on a little tip, something that I like to do when I'm adding borders. I always add my borders on the long sides first and then add the top and bottom borders. And what I like to do in order to be able to maintain control, so here you've got your quilt or the middle that you're adding the borders to, I like to fold over and then fold over again. So when I put it on the machine, I add my border here. And because this is consolidated, I have more control to make sure that I'm sewing a straight line. I hope this is helpful. I'll be right back. My quilt top is complete. I just love three yard quilts. I am so happy that they have now come out with another book. This is Make It Patriotic with Three Yard Quilts. So cool. The patterns are awesome. And you don't have to use red, white, and blue. They look great in red, white, and blue, but I know they'll look great in any color. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my channel. Have a great day, eat some chocolate, and be kind to everyone. Until next time, bye. I know Easter has passed, but I still have some leftover Easter candy. Chocolate covered marshmallow egg. So good. Bye. For these particular four, let's see, blitter, blitter, blitter. And that sounds stupid. Mm, 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 mm.